Hello traders, Mark Chapman here, the creator of the trademark Trap Traders Concepts. Welcome to today's Trap Traders Trade of the Day analysis. Today's date is Monday the 15th of May 2017 and the, uh, the trap we're going to take a look at today is another Fibonacci trap that we talked about uh, last week. If you didn't see that video, I encourage you to go back and take a look at it. Um, it's also a structure failure trap, it happens to be occurring at a decent Fibonacci level. Decent context as well, always important with these traps and you know the word context always um, uh, seems a little bit uh, ambiguous but it's not really it's dead straightforward it's just essentially understanding what's happening before the trap occurs and would that act as um, a precursor for somebody to actually take a trade meaning that the market moving in a certain direction in a very strong way prior to a trap occurring allows you to sort of reverse engineer deconstruct what traders would have been thinking about when they saw that type of move now if you think about how you go about taking a trade generally speaking it's the movement of price right it's it's how price moves that usually gets your attention first and foremost from there what what generally occurs is you then go through the analysis phase and then ultimately if the price action starts reacting in a way that you would uh, consider typical for an entry then you're going to pull the trigger and that's then obviously how people get drawn in get get trapped so if you look at this uh, particular level over here you can see there was a very strong move down and it puts in a new law granted it's nasty price action but it puts in a new law pulls back into a prior level of resistance that breaks up through there becomes support cause makes a new high makes a new law pulls back becomes resistance and it's that resistance at that fibonacci level of 50 percent that would have convinced traders to go in short right it showed them something and if those individuals took those trades then it's not a stretch to understand where those people place their stops initially right they're probably just above that swing uh, worst uh, worst case scenario they'll be can't uh, see if we get that straight. No mind. Worst case now that it'd be above that uh, that swing there, right? Uh, ultimately, price goes against them, and uh, this is when uh, the market causes those individuals to start questioning uh, their uh, ability to stick to the stop so as price starts squeezing those traders right squeezing those traders who went short in there this is where they'll have that conversation with themselves about cancelling the stop loss right and uh, or maybe moving it to here and then as price goes up again and squeezes them even worse now it's a question of oh my goodness you know i can't i can't take this loss this loss is now uh, too much for me uh, down here my risk was in check up here my risk is not in check so you cancel that stop loss and now you're at the uh, the will of the, the trading gods right and imagine the psychology of the person who held that losing trade as price gets to this high imagine this uh, this is obviously the biggest point of pain that they experienced during the course of that trade and then there was some light relief and now they'll be thinking hopefully obviously it goes against them and it's a bit of a, a situation where you know they have relief hoping it's going to follow through then it gets worse they're hoping that that's going to then make a new low it doesn't it makes a new high so they'll be panicking at that point thinking it's going to make a new high but then it puts in a new low right so now they're thinking great this retracement will put in a new low but it doesn't <laughs> it puts in a new high well finally it started to break down and there'll be you know a relief in those traders more uh, than at any point during the course of this trade right if you just think about how you would have felt through this whole period had you made a mess of this scenario over here and we know this is typical for traders um, and, the, and the way that they behave because humans just don't like to lose um, there's lots of cognitive biases that are, are actively working against traders in, in the markets and unfortunately it doesn't mean everybody gets caught by this but there's there's large chunks of people who do so when price comes back into that level we know a thing or two about those particular traders who obviously went short in there and got caught is that this is their first opportunity to bail out of those uh, trades if price comes back into that area at break even now then 
why would they do that well because the trade's gone as far as they're concerned it's not about making money at this point it's about bailing out a break even their motivation from uh, when they originally took that trade the motivation when that setup was all perfect and life was uh, nice and uh, fuzzy essentially their motivation was all about the money and as price goes their way you know as it did momentarily however short-lived you know it was all about the money now then when they start making those mistakes that we just walked through and then they've been through this emotional roller coaster all the way through to this point over here it isn't about money over here it's about bailing out a break even it's the second best trade in the book right their motivation shifted the individual sh motivations has shift shifted from what its original um intention was and and now all they want to do is get out of this alive right it's not about the money anymore you'll get the odd greedy so-and-so that you know will reaffirm their uh, analysis from way back over here and go oh, i knew this was going to work out and the hold right but most people won't do that most people will bail as price approaches that level so if they're sold over there originally then in order to get out of break even they must buy to do that right and that's going to create demand so uh, this looks like a, a pretty good trade um it's a, a little bit of a cheaper price to buy some dollars against uh, the canadian dollar there was some uh, soft data out of the us the back in the last week um inflation data etc uh, but still um i i think it's short-lived i don't think it's a, a major major uh, a major major shift in uh, fed policy off the back of that so i still want to be buying dollars this is going to be bringing dollars uh, to me to buy them more cheaply at better prices that's all sentiment does um so don't get distracted by it and if you'd like to come and uh, join me in my inner circle click the link below and i'll see you on the inside